I'm glad you had fun, babe. I really am. I love to hear you laugh. It's easy with you, Eddie. Uh, you know, someday I'm going to have a real car. You know, last week I was downtown and Danny Fane drove by. He was in a Mercedes. Well, in the meantime, your car will do just fine. <laughs> Chivalry's not totally dead, you know? <laughs> I'm so bad. I loved it. Freeze! This is the police! Stand still! Put your hands on top of your head! Put your hands on top of your head! Holland, I have bail papers here on Merrill Fox. You're right, Holland. Who's that? Let's go get some coffee. 4702, Merrill Fox. You're returning? Friend. Uh, these papers got a flag on them. Flag means she's a parolee. The check in the middle of the flag means she's now in violation of her parole. She's got to contact an agent of the parole board within 24 hours to schedule a meeting. A rearrest is automatic and parole is forfeit. Look, maybe all this should be explained to her. I ain't her attorney either, lady. I'm not even her friend. Oh, I guess I really blew it, huh? Long, sad story, I'm sure. You all right? I guess so. But the other half of the story's still in there. Can't you help him? Eddie Grobard? I don't think I want to. But you have to help him. I don't have to help you. You got everything, all your belongings? I don't have Eddie. Well, I'll check it out. Where's my jewelry? Eddie may have started out with toasters and watches, but he just took a giant step into the big leagues. He is now a full-fledged thief. Don't prosecute the case, Michael. Just give me the information. 
In the past three weeks, four homes have been burglarized. The police had no leads. Last night, they recovered $35,000 worth of home computers at Grobard's place. They came from one of those houses. Now, Grobard couldn't afford to buy anything like that, even at a fence's discount. I couldn't care less about Eddie Grobard. I just want to know, are you charging Merrill as an accomplice? I ought to. She's an embarrassment. Not to me. When you took her on, you talked me into signing on the dotted line right below you. We vouched for her. And now she's hanging around with a crumb like Grobart, and I'm a district attorney. To me, she's an embarrassment. She's a human being and a friend. She needs our help. Oh, Cassie. Not this time. She says she didn't know about Eddie's business. I believe her. Then she put herself in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's a violation of parole. That's the only charge against her? So far. And Grobar did say that she had nothing to do with his chosen profession. So all she has to do is convince the parole board that she deserves to be out. Your opinion could help with them. I'm out of it. I don't want to make the same mistake twice. You're saying jail is better for her? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you want to help her, good luck. Oh, come on, Michael. Cassie, I can't do it. I can't do it. I know that, but I have you and you'll help. But Eddie is a different story. Look, whoever gave him a chance or ever will. Cassie, he was going straight. He was trying for me. He He's was trying. He's been charged with a series of burglaries. Meryl, that's serious. That's how I know he didn't do it. Look, with his record, he could get sent away for a long time. He wouldn't take that chance. Jails are filled with people who wouldn't take that chance. But he didn't, and he needs help. Cassie. Cassie, Eddie's the kind of guy that would buy four hot food processors and think he made a big haul. He is not the kind of guy that would pull down four houses. Look, I know him. That is not him. Small feet sometimes try to take a giant step. No! Look, he said he ran into a guy we both knew before, a guy named Danny Fain. So? Well, Danny Fain is the kind of guy you're talking about, a pro. I told Eddie not to get involved with him, not to see him. He said he wouldn't, but, you know, Eddie's not always very strong. Thieves need fences. Maybe Danny Fain laid the stuff off on Eddie. $35,000 worth of computers? Danny Fain is mega bucks. He is. Ask your cop friends about him. Cassie, Cassie, I am asking you as a friend to help me. No, Meryl. Why don't you go talk to Cassie? She's worried about you. I don't want to see Cassie right now. Yeah, well, she wants to see you. So does Shaq. He's worried, too. Huh. Come on. Don't be impossible. Don't be impossible? The one man I really care about is in deep trouble. And the one person that could help won't do a thing. And you call me impossible. Did it ever occur to you that this particular man might not be worth everybody's... Oh, don't you start. Look, I know that by the world's standards, by your standards, maybe, he's not worth a lot. But as far as I'm concerned, he's worth a great deal. Hey, I, I don't doubt it for a minute, but that doesn't mean you couldn't shop around a little bit. There's a lot of other guys out there. You don't have to, to settle on this one right now. You don't know a thing. What you don't know is that it's very hard to find some man that even wants to know your last name, because if he did, it might look as though he wanted to commit to something more than a one-nighter. Maybe you've been hanging out in the wrong places. That's another thing. I'm an ex-con. How many guys do you know want to take Merrill with a rap sheet home to meet Mother? That didn't bother Eddie. I guess not. He's not exactly in a position to cast the first stone. You see? You see what I mean? Yeah, I'm sorry. That was a cheap shot. I'm just trying to be a friend. Friends are supposed to support each other. Well, your friends are trying to support you now, Merrill, believe it or not. They want to see you get through this. If they don't seem to be helping you get in deeper, it's only because they don't think Eddie Grobart is worth your time. And that's the truth. Look, Benny, I don't want to have this conversation. I can't have this conversation. 
I can only do what I think is right. Even the police used a search warrant when they charged her. I am not looking to arrest her. Just trying to satisfy my own curiosity. Ease up on her, Shaft. You know, if there hadn't been so much easing up, maybe she wouldn't be in this fix right now. Where is she, anyway? I don't know. I wish she'd call. Holland Investigations. No, lady. No, I have all the magazines I'll need. So maybe I am a little concerned. She doesn't make the worst cup of coffee in the world. Shaq, I don't need you to hang around and remind me I have problems. Nobody likes to pay $200 a day to someone who answers her own phone. I'll advertise personalized service. Cassie Holland, Confidential Investigations. Mr. Remsen. Meryl Fox? Sure. She works for me. Thank you, Joe. No fancy one-liners? Trying to steal a $200 watch is not too bright. I needed money to bail out Eddie. Meryl, is that why you picked a store where I've worked? A store where they know my name? I resent being manipulated, Meryl. I just wanted to help him, Kathy. How do you get yourself into these messes? Okay, so I got you out of this one. I'll see what I can do for him. Meryl said you had nothing to do with the robberies. Is that true? Absolutely. I had nothing to do with any robberies. So where'd you get the computer? What? If you didn't steal it, you had to buy it from somebody. Eddie, Cassie's just trying to help you. Forget it! I'm already up the river. This is hopeless! Okay, then. No, Cassie, please. Eddie, I've never seen you this scared. Meryl. I'm a three-time loser. No, it's more than that. It's a lot more. What does this guy have on you? We're wasting this lady's time. Was that computer stolen by Danny Fane? I don't know what you're talking about. Eddie. OK, leave it. You said it yourself, Mr. Grobard. You're going up the river unless you do something to help yourself. And so far, you've done nothing. What can I do? Cooperate. I did not rob those houses. But like what I told the cops, I do not have an alibi. So where'd you get the computer? Forget about fame. He had nothing to do with this. Nothing. Let me out of here. Doug Bradbury from the parole board called me. Word is that Merrill may have a tough time of it before the review committee. They're going to set the date for the end of the month. Did you tell them about her work record with me? No, I told them to contact you. Well, did you mention that you didn't think she's part of Grobard's fencing operation? Yes, I did. Then what's wrong with those people? Breaking and entering, burglary, robbery. It's a little close to the bone these days. They don't like it. Merrill didn't steal anything but her boyfriend may have, and she may have known about it, which makes her an accomplice, so they may have to put her away again. That's what he said? The only way you're going to be sure that Merrill comes away from that review board with a clean bill is if the police come up with someone other than Grobard for those robberies. Now, here's the file on Danny Fane. He's a real beauty. 
We've got paper on him for hijacking, B&E, armed robbery, possession of stolen goods. Read it at your leisure. His most recent work has been with gems, rare coins, and a uh, little non-negotiable paper. Sounds like a sweetie. Pro all the way. Those Palisades robberies were different. Four homes in an affluent area, all with the same M.O. And here's what was stolen. Record players, televisions, the two home computers. Get a load of this. Almost $400,000 worth of small stone set jewelry. Chump junk. Easy to trace, too hard to move. So, why would a guy like Fane, a pro, want to steal a pile of something that he knew he couldn't sell? In my humble opinion, he didn't. Eddie Grobard did. Is it my lucky day, or are you just slumming? No, I had a parking ticket to pay, and I spotted your car. What did you find out? You need a lift, or what? You gonna make me beg? <laughs> Find out the name of the insurance company that has the most to lose. Oh, which was? $400,000 worth of very small stone set jewelry. Wow, small, like in tiny? If you broke those jewels apart just for the rocks, you couldn't sell them for enough to buy a tank of gas. Well, then maybe that Fane guy still has them. A good bet. All we have to do to prove he pulled the jobs is to catch him with the jewels. Is that all? <laughs> right. Hey, maybe if we called him on the phone, he'd confess. What we're going to call now is the insurance company and get a $100,000 advance. A $100,000 advance? That's a great deal of money, Miss Holland. $400,000 is an even greater amount. Look, you come waltzing in here off the street, and I don't know you from Adam or Eve. Call first. You expect me to give you $100,000 just like that? Not just like that. Unless two very close friends have let me down, you've already received two phone calls. One from the district attorney's office establishing my credibility and confirming my involvement in this case. And from George Davenport of Seaboard Insurance. Yeah, Mr. Davenport did call. And he told you I've done recovery work in the past? He said you were pretty good. Oh. Well, all right, he said you were very good. But I have my own investigators for this kind of work, people that I pay salary, con considerable salary. And if, for whatever reason, your people don't recover the jewels and they end up, let's say, out of the country, you eat the 400,000. 100,000 is much more than a standard finder's fee. 10% is 40,000. The $100,000 is not my fee. That's what I need to get to the jewels. You get that back when the police arrest the thief. I'm not sold, Miss Holland. I think I'll just let my own people handle it, huh? I know who has the jewels, Mr. Poyer. I could have them on your desk within the week. Oh, and I'll take that finder's fee as well. 10%, you say? You know, I could really get used to this kind of life. This stuff's got a little class. Yeah, and what about that limousine? Really? And don't forget, the rental company wants it back in one piece. Yeah, but do we get back in one piece? Of course. You are now employed by a new firm. A very enterprising one. Janice Scarpazian. Not bad. How much is she paying me? A percentage of a percentage. That sounds like one of my deals. And I want you two to remember something else. I really appreciate your help with this. Hey, for Meryl. Let's just do it, OK? OK. May I? Under the money he gets from stealing. It's the only way he can stay clear of the IRS. May I help you? Yes. Do you 
tell Mr. Fane Janice Scarpazian would like to see him? I'm sure one of our salespeople can help you as well as Mr. Fane. No, I don't think so. All our salespeople can answer any questions you might have. Perhaps, but I'm not sure Mr. Fane would like them to hear the questions I have in mind. I'm afraid I just don't understand, Miss Scarpazian. My phone number is on the card. Tell Mr. Fane I'm very anxious to talk to him. Something tells me we didn't get very far. We'll get him if we have to go through every fence in town. Who was she? Just some broad, Danny. I wouldn't sweat it. That's the difference between me and you. I always sweat it. Hey, what are you doing? Lou, Perry! I don't like my game interrupted, Buster. Hey! Excuse us. You are Joel Greenberg, aren't you? Oh, you must be that Scarpazian woman. Word travels fast. Especially when you talk to a couple of clowns like Brenner and Simpson. They're supposed to be the two best fences in Los Angeles. Seemed like a good place to start. Brenner is third. I'm number two, man. Don't think of me as competition, Mr. Greenberg. Consider me an ally. I'm looking to buy small stone set jewelry, the sort of material you or Mr. Brenner or Mr. Simpson would never buy. No one buys small stone stuff. I do. The man I work for has to leave the country. The jewels he buys will stay in the family. They won't be on display. An Arab, huh? Got to be an Arab or an Iranian. If you have any small stone material. Never had reason to buy it. As I said, don't think of me as competition. I'll buy from you, or I'll buy directly from those who acquire it. Plus, I think you'll find my terms quite liberal. You smile. You talk nice. You're dressed with style. How come I got this feeling you'd cut my heart out? Because I would, Mr. Greenberg. Benny, leave him something as a gesture of good faith. Sounds like the same woman. Who knows? Maybe she's got some. Yeah, right. I just got off the phone with Simpson. She's real, all right. <laughs> she really throw a grand at old man Greenberg. The old goat almost flipped out. I wonder what she wants. The word is she works for some kind of oil sheet. You know, Greenberg and that bunch be getting tighter than hell in the pocketbook. Well, you know, they used to be the only game in town. Maybe now they aren't. <laughs> I asked you who she was, and you told me not to sweat it. Next time, you better check it out. Got it? Yeah, sure, Dan, sure, sure. That's right. I'm Janice Scarpazian. Well, a mystery lady. No mystery about it. I want to do business. Aren't you going to ask me to sit? Oh, please. But uh, it'd be better if uh, Fido and Rover went over by the bar. Better be careful. Fido and Rover have very sharp teeth. You're scaring me to death. I hope so. It'll save us time. I'm here on business. Mr. 
So here's business. 16 diamonds. Quarter of a carat up to a carat. Mm hmm. You can have them for 8,000. You can have them for 8,000. I'll have them for 1,500. Come on. Who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? They're small and they're yellow. And the larger ones have feathers. They're also not what I really am after. You got a sharp eye. OK, you got them. But I need set jewelry. Since when is there a market for that stuff? Since I said that's what I need. I don't get it. Set pieces are too easy to trace. And if you take the stones out, you've got the same kind of uh, chips you just bought. I don't want them to break them up. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're linked up with some kind of oil chic or something. So the junk's going out of the country. Which will make it untraceable. You come up with them and we can do business. Big business. I'll give you a call. My, uh, my man's leaving the country soon. I want you to call me soon. Like I said, I'll get back to you. just vague. Well, if a guy like Fiend was sitting on $400,000 worth of unmovable goods, and suddenly there was a way to move them, don't you think he would have jumped at it? Unless he's already moved them. Yeah, but we talked to the top fences in town. None of them would touch that kind of stuff. Yeah, we talked to the big fences, but maybe Fane talked to the little guys. No, that would mean he'd have to move two or three pieces one day, two or three another day. Not a very lucrative way to move stuff. OK, so it's not the best idea. Don't be so sensitive. Who's being sensitive? Half an idea is better than none. Mr. Imperial, isn't it? Oh, it's a pleasure, Miss Scar... Scarpazian. Oh, it's my pleasure, Miss Scarpazian. I can imagine. Right. Look, um, yeah, I know you're looking for business. I mean, the word is out everywhere, you know. No kidding. No, no, no kidding. And I just want you to know, whatever you're looking for, I'm your guy. I'm talking TVs, stereos, amplifiers, silverware. I can move cars, boats, recreational vehicles. Diamonds. Rubies, emeralds. Oh, well, that's not exactly what you'd call my stock in trade, but you know. Small stone jewelry, perhaps? Things with a high value as long as they're still in their original settings? You see anything like that from time to time? Well, yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, I hope you've seen some lately. The other fences tell me there's nothing they can do. No, hardly anybody handles that, time, that kind of thing, Miss Scarposian. I know a big-time thief like Danny Fane wouldn't touch what I want. But he's not the only game in town, lucky for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, well you're, you're right about Fane. I mean, a guy like that, he won't go buy that kind of stuff. See, but I might be able to track some down for you anyway. I mean, like a guy, he knocks over a house, or he snatches a purse, or a box of stuff. You don't know what he's got. Then he finds himself stuck with the kind of stuff that you're looking for. It's, it's small stuff. I won't mind asking around for you. I was sure you wouldn't. I'm depending on you, Mr. Imperial. I hope you don't keep me waiting too long. No, I won't. 
You can believe me, I won't. Excellent. Well, now, if there's nothing else, if there's nothing else. Oh. Yeah, um, I just wanted to let you know I, I think you got real nice legs. Thank you. Gotta be an easier way. All right, this is, this is uh, Buddy Imperial. I want to talk to Danny Fain. Right. I want you to work on Eddie. See if you can get him to open up about that computer. I tried, but it's as if he simply put it out of his mind. He's terrified, Cassie, and I just don't know of what. Your future's on the line, too. Next time, you better tell him about that. I did. Eddie's not the only one who's scared, Cassie. I am, too. Well, you have a right to be. I ran the play through a leasing company. It's run into a Cassie Holland. She's a private detective. And the other one? And here's I can make it, it's her secretary. But Danny, you wanted a fast run. I got you a fast run. I can keep digging. Yeah, do that. <sighs> she, she looks familiar. Whatever she's doing, she's got me with those crummy rocks I sold her. If she's running for the cops, they would have been here already. I think it's just her, Dan. I bet the cops aren't even in this. It ain't your butt. We're betting. Meryl? Meryl Fox? I used to know this broad. Must have been six, eight years ago. That's right. Then that creep I ran into, what's his name? He said he was seeing it with Crowbar? Crowbar? Eddie Crowbar. Yeah, that's him. He got busted for those robberies in the Palisades. It was in the papers. Set jewels. Set jewels. Set jewels. That's why this Holland Broad was digging so hard. She's setting me up for Crowbar. You want something should happen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it should be serious. But first, we got to get back the stone she bought from me, huh? And grow barn. Look into him. Cassie! Cassie, it's him. It's Fane. It's the line that Fane has. Okay, take it easy. Scarpazian? I feel like a jerk. Self-awareness is a priceless gift, Mr. Fane. How are you? Well, lousy. See, I, I got some good news and some not-so-good news. You know those rocks I sold you? Not by name. Well, um, you see, they came from a lot that was already sold to someone else. Uh, I'm afraid I need them back. What if I say no? Hey, come on. You said they weren't what you really wanted anyway. Come on. And those set jewels you wanted? Yeah. In quantity. You want to do business? You know I do. Nine tonight. Good. What? What? We're in. And he's selling set jewelry. My lucky day, huh? Two visitors in a row. Better than that. You're out of here. What? Yeah, you're on your way out of here. You made bail. <laughs> I did. Uh, Sorry. Raise the money. Huh? Nothing. Edward Grobar. He's just coming out now. Bell is 2,500 bucks. Okay. You sure you won't know it was us who bailed him out? No way. Diamond Yacht posted bond. What do you want me to do with him? Nothing. 
We take no chances till I get those diamonds back from Ms. Holland. After I get them, you can clean out the rest of them. What do you mean he's not here? He bailed an hour ago, that's what I mean. We're talking about Grobard, Edward L. Look, miss, you got a beef, take it up with the captain, okay? No, no, it's just that I, I would have known if... We didn't have enough money to make bail. So, maybe he's got a fairy godmother. But trust me, he's not here. I went to visit you in jail, Eddie. They said you made bail. How'd you make bail, Eddie? Wasn't it you? Me? I couldn't get the money. Well, it doesn't make any difference, does it? Because I'm gone. Weren't you going to tell me where you got those? You wouldn't understand, Merle. No, no, I guess I wouldn't understand. You see, because you told me you didn't pull those robberies. But if you didn't pull them, then how did you get the jewelry? Oh, come on, Merle. So it was me. So it was a lie, all of it including the fact that you let me think that it was Danny Fain who did it. I didn't let you think anything. You wanted it to be anybody but me. You came up with Danny Fain. You decided it was him. I didn't see any point in arguing with you any further on it. I thought you and I had something worth arguing about. I didn't say we didn't, Merle. You're okay. You just don't want much. Like a Mercedes? Danny Fain and me were the same kind of guys. Except, I was sitting around, going nowhere. Danny? Okay, he made his move. He put his act together and he made his move. I just didn't want to sit my whole life out being a punk. So I made a move. Yeah, I went for it. I started to hit fit, fat, rich houses. It was easy, real easy. It's not as though you didn't try and tell me. I guess I just didn't want to hear what I was hearing. Oh, whatever. It's over, Merle. I put myself on the line for you. Cassie Holland is going after Danny Fane for you. For you, for you! We could have gotten killed. Danny Fane is a really bad guy. And you just let us go out there after him. Okay, I'm sorry. No, Eddie. No way. No, Meryl! No way. I'm going to the cops. I'm not going to let you get away with this. Such a nice day. Mm. 
Then he says he'd like you to go for a sale. Talk to me, sweet pea. Was the Holland woman waiting to hear from you? Huh? Good. That's real good. Do you have anything on him? I stashed the rest of it. Well, what do you know? Small stones. Fancy settings. You know, it's almost 8.30. If we're going to meet Fane at 9, we're going to have to hit the road. Yeah, it's just that I expected Merrill back. I wanted her on the phones in case Fane tried to call. Well, if he wanted to change his plans, he would have called already. You know, Fane wanting the jewels back just doesn't seem quite right. Well, maybe we can cancel and try to nail him with the jewels we've got. No, that's too much of a long shot. Let's go. said to meet him here? Uh-huh. Mr. Fane! Good evening, Ms. Carpazian. Did you bring the stones? Yes. Good. Can I see them? Of course. Hundred you paid for them. Now that you got your money, you've got your stones. Hey, Leon! You tried to set up the wrong guy. And you were doing a pretty good job of it. Now that. It's a bad mistake trying to sell you these. What was your next step? Planting this junk in my car? You think we were setting you up? Doesn't matter anymore. You're dead either way. <laughs>
Stand still, Eddie. Hey, Merle. Come on, this is my shot. Let me go. Just the... You run. You go ahead and run. Hey, Merle. Do you want to get the gun away from her, man? Come on, will you get it? She looks like she's doing okay to me. Huh, baby? You doing okay? She's gonna do a lot better than you're gonna do. for my money. Hi, Cassie. How are you? Oh, hi, Shaq. How are you? Ah, oh, liver's acting up. Come on, come on. Don't stall. You made a lot of money on the insurance. How about this month's rent? This month's rent isn't due for two weeks. Do I gripe when you're two weeks late? Yes. How about a cup of coffee instead? Hi. Stolen anything lately? Shaq, don't. Oh, that's all right? Of course it's all right. The parole board let her off the hook. As a matter of fact, a lot of them thought she was a hero, and who knows? Maybe she is. Well, Shaq, that was almost nice. That's all right, he didn't mean it. Of course I meant it. I think you argue with her just for the sake of arguing. Well, you can always replace her, you know. Come on, how about the money? You say something really nice to Merrill, and I'll give you this check. You try hard. Nice. It's not signed. Wasn't nice enough. 